Good morning you guys and welcome back to my channel for another video. Today I'm going to take you guys through our typical homeschooling routine. Today is a day where we have nothing extra going on, no different variables that life is throwing at us. So today is going to be a very routine. This is our everyday homeschooling routine now with my kids in grades 10, 9, 7, and 5 fifth grade. Um, so I wanted to share a typical routine with you guys so you can maybe see how things are working at this stage of homeschooling and with kids, my kids ages for nothing else than for you guys to reference. And I do want to thank Night Zookeeper for sponsoring today's video. So we are getting ready to start our school day. I strive for 830. We are in my kitchen because this is where we start our school day. We start our school day around the table um, as a family and we go through our Bible time, we go through read alouds, we go through history, we go through um, science for my younger two, we go through apologetics for my older two. Of course, not all on the same day, um, but those are in general the things that we are working on together as a family or in groups of two kids at a time. Um, so at 8.30, everyone comes over, we start with World Watch, and then we move into Bible, and then um, each of the following things behind. Our morning time takes, I do have to limit it um, to write about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes because my older kids obviously have full high school course loads, and so if I end up taking two hours, which has been done, um, doing morning time, then it really just kind of sets everybody back for the day. So I've learned that I don't need to get rid of morning time because it's my absolute favorite part of our homeschooling day, but I do need to be mindful of the time that we're spending doing that because my older kids, like I said, do have um, other things that, you know, can take a while. So uh, that's how we start. We start all together as a family. It's something that we've done since I started homeschooling in various capacities. So if you're a mom and you've got younger kids, you can scroll way, 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 way back on this playlist and see how I was doing things six and seven years ago. What a blessing to have all of that captured, um, even if it wasn't like the best videography at the time I was using my iPhone. Um, so we are going to sit down 8.30 and get started. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a voiceover for uh, the video or if I'm going to pop in intermittently. Haven't decided that. Going to see how it works out um, because I actually am schooling my children while we're doing this. It's not uh, like a recreation. So we'll see how it works out. But um, yes, we are going to get started. 8.30, typical start of our day. A lot of people will probably be wondering, I forgot I wanted to say this, what have they done prior to this? Um, they've made their beds, they've got themselves ready, they get dressed every single day, they have done their chores, they have, um, one of my kids is doing a devotional right now, like a separate one from homeschooling, so she's working on that. The other two are upstairs playing a game, and so uh, at 8.30 I call them down. So sometimes they have free time before we start school, and sometimes if they've slept in, they do not. They were up earlier today, so naturally that gives us all a little bit more time in the morning. So we're gonna start now with our school day at 8.30. Today's video is sponsored by Night Zookeeper and I wanted to spend some time sharing with you guys how we incorporate Night Zookeeper into our homeschooling routine. Not our daily typical routine, but definitely once a week I have my two youngest kids get onto Night Zookeeper to practice their spelling, their writing, their grammar, their reading, their computer literacy, and all while doing it in a really fun and engaging way. Night Zookeeper is an online award-winning platform for kids ages 5 through 12, and I do think there is some wiggle room on both sides of 
those age ranges for your kids to work on all things pretty much language arts. So if you're going to be taking a spring break soon, you're going to be traveling, or like me, you want to have something different in your homeschool for certain days of the week, Night Zookeeper is a great way to keep your kids fresh with their writing and all the skills you've worked really, really hard on in your homeschool um, while you don't have to do any of the teaching. Me being a work at home homeschooling mom, I utilize Night Zookeeper differently on different days of the week dependent upon what my work is looking like that week. Sometimes if I need to film something and my kids are done with their school, I will have them spend some time on Night Zookeeper. We also use it as a part of our fun Friday um, options where my kids are not doing their language arts curriculum, they're doing Night Zookeeper instead. There's so, so many games like this one you guys are seeing here with my son with the flashlight, um, working on some challenging words. So it's not just a waste of time, they're actually getting value out of being on Night Zookeeper. So if you guys wanna check out Night Zookeeper, I do have a discount link down below there is no code needed. You just need to click that link and you can get 50% off of your subscription to Night Zookeeper. And they do have a multi-sibling plan so you can save even more that way. All you have to do is check the link down below and your kids will be on their way to creating fun characters like you guys are seeing my daughter here. Um, choosing her character to get in the submarine and then she selected her difficulty of words that she wanted. I'm always encouraging her to try hard words instead of easy, but sometimes she likes to do easy because she wins the game. And sometimes I let her do that. But you can see here that she is, um, you know, some of these words are, are difficult words. They're not just basic spelling words. And so I really, really appreciate that from Night Zookeeper. So all that information is down below for you guys. Make sure to check them out. So here's everything that we are going to be running through um, in our homeschool on this particular day. Our homeschooling routine, like I said, this is a typical day in our homeschool, so it does start the same way every single day, and that is in the Word of God. So my kids are doing their Bible study, I'm doing my Bible study, and it's really cool to be at this stage of parenting where I can actually spend 10, 15 minutes in a Bible study of my own side by side my children. Even if we're not doing the same um, Bible study, they are doing some studies from Not Consumed and they're specific to them. So since I'm not doing a Bible study with them, once we complete this, I go around the table and ask them what their takeaways were just to hear how they are applying what they read to their personal lives. And I think there's a lot of benefit in uh, training kids to read scripture in that way of how does this apply to me? What can I do with what I've read? And so we always start our school day off, a typical school day right here in the word of God. So after Bible study, I will then read a psalm to them from uh, this book that is taking us through the entire book of Psalms. We will read that. We will have a word of prayer. And then after that, we move on to our other books. Uh, on this particular day, I had my son start our read aloud. We are currently reading A Place to Hang the Moon. We are always reading multiple books and you guys will see that. But this is our uh, family read aloud book that we are reading right now. So after I read the Psalm, then we get into our read aloud where everyone is sitting around the table and listening.
after we've gone through the read aloud, then I move on to the other books that we are reading together as a family. We always have a poem to read, and sometimes I have another book or two to read here. On this particular day, I did not. So once we finished up these read alouds, then we uh, split into half to do history. My high school aged kids are doing uh, their history course at the same time as I am facilitating another history course with my younger two kids, uh, which you guys can see here is on the couch. Uh, we're doing a literature-based history for them, so it involves a lot of reading. And this has been working out really well. This is a new thing for me this year to be doing history separately. And so um, I was a little nervous, apprehensive, but it's actually worked out okay. So once my older kids are done with their history course, they are going to go ahead and head upstairs and get started on their independent subjects, things like their grade level, skill level appropriate, math, reading, language arts, electives, foreign languages, all of those things so you can see them heading upstairs. They go upstairs and get started and I do a science lesson with my younger two kids. We were learning about um, uh, simple machines and motion from the good and the beautiful here, but this is our science time. I don't do this every single day, but at least two to three times a week, we're almost done with this unit. And there was a fun little um, demonstration that went with this. So I spent a little more time with them downstairs than I typically would. We were done uh, with this portion of our homeschool routine by about 1030. And that was including a snack break in there. So around 1030, we were done with this and we cleaned up the downstairs and we all headed upstairs so that my younger two kids could get started on their independent subjects like their um, math and language arts and all of those things. So at this point in our homeschooling journey, we are a pretty well-oiled machine. Now that does not mean that we don't have our difficult days because we do. However, what my kids do and what they know to do next is is very um, self-explanatory to them. So all of my kids are working at the same exact time on their independent subjects. They. I print them in order at the beginning of the school year that I want them to follow. Some of my kids follow that, some of them do not. Um, and I really don't care as long as they're getting things done. Some kids need checklists and others don't need them. So that is fine with me. So I'm showing you all these different camera angles because all of this is happening simultaneously. And many of these things, my kids at the grades and ages they are, they are able to completely work on these things alone. Um, and all I am there for is for questions and guidance and verifying accuracy on the things that I need to. Now my youngest daughter um, in the fifth grade is still very much doing most of what she does side by side with me, but it's just the gradual progression. So all of my kids have been fifth grade before and um, now having kids going into the 11th grade next year, there's just such a rapid uh, growth and change here. So I sit right next to her and check each and everything she does. I verify the work of my older kids as well, but it's just done differently because some of the things they use, there's auto grading involved and things like that. So we are working all together, everyone on their own things, going through independent subjects. And you can see here, I'm grading something, going over it with her, a writing assignment. And while I'm doing that, you're gonna see in the next clip, my son is in my bedroom reading his uh, silent reading book, Robin Hood. So he's tucked behind the pillows over there. So all of this is happening all at one time, which really lends itself to efficiency in our homeschool. Now on this particular day, everyone was done with their schoolwork their entire school day. 
by the time it was lunch, which was about 12.15. Now, that does not happen every day, but when it does, we all um, really enjoy that and it just leaves the second half of the day to what we want to do or what we need to get done and it's nice to have a little bit more time to ourselves. So that's not the norm. Don't get it in your head that it's the norm. It's not, but on this day when I filmed a typical routine, we were done by lunchtime. I would say on average, we're done by about 1.30 every single day, unless there's something that is just taking a, a lot longer than that, like a dissection or someone needs help with something and we're just struggling. But on average, I would say we're done by about 1.30. So that is a look at our typical day in our homeschool. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye friends.